Read all the stories at homeoffice.studio and watch all the videos to get an exceptionally advanced, entertaining education. Greetings. I'm uh, making a video about business. I want to try to make, you know, I've been working on this website for a while and I'm making some progress, getting some videos that are pretty decent. You know, they're around 45 minutes to an hour long. And I thought I would read, do one for business. I'm going to do one for each section, you know, business, computer, website, artisan, and space. Try to get a like a 45 minute video for each section. I was been thinking about private property. I think that private property can be uh, it, it's it's important. It's very important. I think that all natural resource first first of all. Every creature and all natural resources and all private and public property belongs to God. I think natural resources should be managed by the state. And, that, you know, the, all natural resources belong to all the people of Earth and they have a right to control that and manage that appropriately and set rules and make contracts and stuff like that to create some kind of a fair system, some some sort of severance taxes for anybody that uses natural resources. The really critical factor is land, which I consider to be a natural resource, so that would also be controlled by the state. But there would be some sort of contract system allowing people to farm, you know, farmers and to have land and they would definitely have certain rights to that land to, for, I don't know, the time would be effect, you know, how long and stuff like that would be important. And so, you know, that the people are going to have to, you know, the legislature will set those rules and everything like that to make it fair. The value added to the natural resources will be um, there'll be private property and there'll be con also contracts and different things about how that can be traded. For example, I think that if a person invents some new product, it belongs to him, not the company he's working for and things like that. And I, I think the company should be owned by the employees of the company. Now there should be it should be possible to invest in the companies. I suppose there may be different classes of uh, stock. You know the employees would earn stock, and the longer they worked for the company, the more stock they would earn, and the higher they would get more income from the stock. You know, and in addition to their wages, their you know, whatever that is. And so that's kind of what I'm thinking. And, and so getting people what i want is private enterprise and free enterprise where people own their own means of production and produce new you know stuff you know it's creativity exercise your creativity and produce something valuable whatever that is whether it's a physical product a knowledge something anything and then trade that in the one global free marketplace and the market would be free and there would be because the free market is kind of the golden goose uh, you know the goose that lays the golden eggs you know and we need to nurture that it needs to be well regulated so that you don't have bullies any kind of bullies distorting the market and things like that and so you know, that's kind of what I, one of the things is, you know, that whole capitalism, how is that going to work in this? And the other thing is, is that the, the market has to be global. You know, it's, it's we got to have a one world free marketplace because it's just natural. And uh, that's the way things are going to be. And, you know, so we'll work on that and creating this one global free marketplace. So capitalism is the uh, private ownership 
of the means of production and private control of the means of production. National socialism is private ownership of the means of production and state control of the means of production, which is kind of a lot like what we have now, where the state has just rules about every detail of what how to work, you know, OSHA, and I mean, every detail of how to do any, everything at work is controlled by the government. That's fascism. That's what fascism is, is state-controlled private property. And, um, of course, communism or, or Marxist socialism is uh, state ownership and control of the means of production. You know, and I, I'm, I fa I'm in favor of private ownership and private control of the means of production. That private control of the means of production is really important because that's what is, uh, enables the creativity and productivity of the capitalist system. That's what makes it so successful is people can invent things that nobody else ever thought of. If everybody's just doing what they're told to do, nobody's going to invent anything, you know, it's just natural, you know, and so to me, capitalism is the science of economics and socialism, any kind of socialism is the science of control and, and that's all it is, it's about being in control and we don't really need, you know, God is in control, you know, God makes the rules Another thing about capitalism is both capitalism and democracy require the people to be religious. The people who created capitalism and, and, and democracy were religious people. They were all, most of them were, a lot of the founding fathers of the United States were, what do they call that, uh, deists. You know, they believed in God, but they weren't really very religious about anything. And, you know, and they respected Jesus and they respected all, you know, the religions of the world. And, uh, but the vast majority, 95% of the people in the United States were Christians. You know, the, the people that were considered themselves to be the United States of America. Because there were Native Americans that were not, you know, they were just Native Americans. They had their own religion. But... The American citizens were, you know, 95% of them were Christians. And, and they wrote and they explained it in great detail. They explained the reasoning behind the Constitution and, and you know, and, the, you know, the, the, you know, Adam Smith's inquiry into the wealth of nations was published the same year the Declaration of Independence was published. You know, and, and that enlightenment and that, you know, industrial revolution was going on. One of the products of that revol cultural revolution was the American Revolution. You know, that was one of the effects of it. But it was it's been it was going on for a long time before that happened. And you know, and then and then the you, American Revolution was just a consequence of that cultural revolution that was had been going on for quite a while. And, you know, and, and that's what it was all about. It was about personal autonomy. It was about, uh, you know, self-determination. Private property was a very critical part of it. You know, people had a right to have private property. And nobody had a right to take that away. You know, not even the state has a right to take somebody's private property. That's their private property. And they have a right to do whatever they want to with it. And that's a very important part of what of society and civilization and human nature and civilization and this whole idea of where the state is taking control of everything is actually they want to call it a revolution it's not a revolution it's a counter revolution the american revolution is the the revolution against the ruling class there was a ruling class they ruled the whole world for ever since the end of the last ice age you know, the agricultural revolution was all, it's, it's been ruled by kings the whole entire time. 
I mean, most of them had slaves. Not all of them, but the vast majority of those civilizations had slaves. Slavery was just normal. Okay, and then we had the Enlightenment in this idea that every individual human being is an autonomous and has rights that are God-given, you know, they're natural rights that do not come from the state. And so that's what they did, and they put all that together and, and created the United States. And it, it was a long, it wasn't, they didn't just instantly change everything all at once. I mean, it was, it's been a long, hard, you know, you know, slog. You know, I mean, we've had to work hard to get this, to make the progress we've made. Right now, what we're experiencing is a huge setback where, you know, we made all these progress in civil rights where noble people would be considered by the content of their character and, and the, you know, their, their actions and not their appearance, not the color of their skin. You know, they're not, we're not going to judge people based on the color of their skin. We've worked on that for my whole life. That's been one of the most important parts of American culture is that freedom, equality, and justice for all. And uh, now I, we, we, people want to go back to judging people by their skin color and what race they are and all this. And it's just, oh, come on, man. You know, and then they want to have a, this one particular political party wants to be in control of everything. And it's like, oh, man, we just we just got rid of that. You know, we just liberated ourselves from that tyranny. And now for, they've been able to. And what we did is we allowed that to fester overseas. And and now they've kind of snuck in and they been teaching people that, oh, this is such a great idea. No, it's, it's a dumb idea that was, it's an old idea that, and the consequence of it is always the same. You have a few rich people that rule and tell everybody else what to do, and a whole bunch of poor people. That's the old way, the old world. They called this the new world, you know, when they discovered America, they called it the new world, and the new and that's what it, this is the new world where we would have democracy and private property and capitalism and free enterprise and you know freedom equality and justice for all that was the the, the revolution and this idea that we're going to put a bunch of bureaucrats in control you know college educated you know smart alex who think they're smarter than everybody else so they should be able to tell everybody what to do because they went to school that's that's the old world order, that's the old ways. And we're, we don't want to go back to that. I, the human race is never going back to that. We don't need to be ruled, we don't need no stinking ruling class. You know, we, we have freedom, equality, and justice for all. We have the rule of law. There is law and there's a, a system that we invented back then, those guys invented a system that works pretty good, uh, you know, and the legislature makes the rules and of course, they, they can't just make any rules. The, the rules have to, you know, they can't violate the laws of nature. There's laws of nature like gravity, you know, the speed of light. They can't just pass a law and say, oh, we're not going to follow the rule of gravity anymore. It doesn't, you know, the, the gravity just is. It doesn't care whether anybody believes in it or not. It doesn't depend on anybody knowing about it or caring about it. It just is. And it's kind of, there, there's natural laws of human nature that are just like that. They, they don't, and you know, freedom, equality, and justice for all are some of those rules. And they're, they're, they're hardwired into the biology of the human central nervous system. It's what separates human beings, civilized human beings from animals. I would say wild animals, but a more accurate description of what th these control freaks are trying to do is more like domestic animals, like cattle and sheep, you know, the, you know where they're herded around and they you know, get their shots every once in a while. That's, that's what the, these control freaks are trying to do right now. And we, I hope we don't do anything like that. You know, I don't necessarily know what the kingdom of God is going to be like, but... I hope it's not like that, where you have a few 
leaders who get to tell everybody else what to do. That's a, a nightmare world, you know. And there, there's going to be a state, you're going to have a state that's going to take care of people and enforce the rule of law and ambulances and fire engines and stuff like that. You, get, you know, you need to have a state. But the state is, they, they're there to serve and protect the people, not control them. And so that's just an important part, you know, I, I, about, and I want to teach you that what exactly capitalism is, you know, because I hear people talk, oh, we hate this and that and that, and they don't even know what they're talking about. And I, I know that because what they're saying doesn't make any sense. Capitalism is private ownership of the means of production and private control of the means of production. And these big giant corporations, that's not what they are. You know, if Microsoft owns the software on my computer and they control it, that's not capitalism. That's that's Mar that's uh, it's not Marxism. It, it's national socialism. It's fascism. You know, that's what fascism is. The racist stuff. The uh, that that was kind of a side thing. That the the. the you know, Hitler was a racist, you know, he was a satanic, from what I understand, he was kind of a satanic racist. But most of the Germans, they were, they were, they were national socialists. They, they believed in private ownership of the means of production, you know, Krupp and all those big giant corporations over there in Germany controlled by the state. The state would control everything and tell everybody what to do and they all kind of worked together and it was a big war machine. And so, you know, and everybody focuses on the racism and, and the, you know, Hitler's psychotic personality. But, the, you know, those Germans, they were, that's not what they were about. They were about national socialism. It was an economic system. And it was very productive. It's very, you know, I mean, even, and after World War II, they, they came over, we brought a bunch of German scientists and econ economists over here, and they helped us get to the moon. I mean, you know, they st that was the Germans that did that. You know, they got us to the moon. You know, they, you know we just happened to get, a, you know, help. We helped, everybody helped. That was a kind of a human enterprise that we did there. And, and so I just wanted to kind of clear that up, you know, in the con this con the context of this story. So, okay. When you're trying to figure out how you're going to make a living, especially if you're young, you know, say 20 something years old, what should you do to get started? Start investing right away. You know, you start investing a little bit every month of buying assets, assets put money into your bank account rather than you know costing you money they, they actually earn you money so you want to buy assets and you, you and you keep buying assets a little bit every month and and that your your capital will grow grow your capital learn how to grow your capital or make money and learn how to do that and get real good at it and learn how to trade and learn how to make really good deals you know make sure everyone you trade with gets a good deal you know and you don't want to be greedy and selfish you know that will cause you and everybody else trouble you know it's harmful so practice free enterprise and, and make sure everybody that you trade with gets a good deal that's business, that's commerce, you know, and if, just, you know, if anybody gets harmed by a deal, then that's corruption, not business. And, you know, so write down your goals, you know, what do you like doing? Find something you like to do, think about what do you like to do? What are you interested in? And start writing down goals. And write down your goals, what you want to do, write down like, lifetime goals, you know, what, 10 year goals, five year goals, one year goals, you know, goals for the month. What do you want to accomplish this month? You know, and this week, you know, whatever goals, you know, you can even do daily goals, you know, it depends on how, you know, I'm not one, I don't spend a lot of time doing it. I do have 
I do write down goals every once in a while, and I look at them every once in a while and check my progress and write down this, a new list and things like that. And because it always evolves, your list of goals are going to evolve over time. And um, you know, and then the other thing is uh, write a business plan. Start working on writing a business plan, doing some research and figuring out. You know, I got an article about writing a business plan on homeoffice.studio. You can look at that and kind of give you a, an outline of what, how, what a business plan looks like. And you can do some research and figure out, that, you know, because you've got to have knowledge about the market and, you know, what, how much is it going to cost you to start the business. And, you know, getting, uh, you got to get, uh, one of the things that's probably pretty important is getting a business license and insurance and uh, permits and, you know, all kinds of things like that. And getting everything, your uh, patents and uh, stuff like that. And get all that stuff in order and keep it in order. And get in the habit of keeping good records. I say use uh, Caligra and and build yourself a set of you know documents to document your business you know and keep that up to date well, you would have a, a you know a directory in your file system that plans or whatever you know and and you would have a business plan it would be in there you could have your resume in there and you could have each, you know, you could have uh, any uh, strategic plans that you have in, in there and keep them up to date and neat and organized and easily accessible. So you can like just go there and like say you need to set a, submit a resume. Maybe you just need to go get a job. So you can, your resume is right there ready to go up to date and, and you just print it out and, and go. And so you get all that stuff organized and and that's your personal information management system on your laptop you know and your desktop you know your desktop is going to be your main computer and you'll have i always say you want to have a, a two systems one is going to be your desktop at home that's going to be your main uh, place where you work right but you'll have a, a, a like a backup that's synchronized to that on a remote server like Linode or something like that, where everything is backed up and you can access it from anywhere. If you go on vacation and you're on the other side of the world, you can easily log into your account on Linode and have access to it. And that's automatically synch synced to the desktop at home. And so you have two copies of everything. And that way, if one of them is damaged you know, or destroyed, you've got a backup. Caligra is uh, not the most well-developed pro office productivity suite of tools that are available. But it is made by KDE. And in keeping with the KDE desktop program that I've been talking about in this website, I, I'm going to say, recommend that you do use it. And by using it, it that's going to help get it developed, you know, and work on it developing. And where I, I recommend, you know, if you're interested in doing computer science stuff, get, you know, get it into your local development environment and start working on improving it. And, uh, you know, link it back to the, you know, KDE development team and so they can people they can see what's going on on your system and they can help improve it and um, so you know and you got the most important one the first one you need to get familiar with is Caligra sheets and start making your documentation for uh, you know your income and expenses and profits and losses and cash flow and you know, your budget uh, and all that kind of stuff and use Caligra Sheets and learn how to use it and create your own. You know, you can buy good software, you know, on, online, you know, from Amazon and Google and Microsoft and stuff like that. 
that do all this stuff for you. What I'm recommending that you do is build your own, you know, and that way you have control over it. You know, when I read that Microsoft Windows user agreement and it basically says Microsoft owns the software on my computer, I, no, I don't agree to that. Build your own and your own, own your own means of production. Start with Caligra. And let's start learning how to use it and start working on improving Caligra because it definitely needs to improvement to catch up with LibreOffice and OpenOffice or the other two ones that are more, you know, they're more advanced, they're more farther along the line of, of development. And let's get this one up to date and start using sheets and, and to create your financial documentation and use uh, stage to create uh, presentations, you know, the, for your business, the sales and marketing materials. Use Caligra words, you can use Caligra words to write your business plan and other documents and, you know, whatever, you know, dot writing tools is what that is. And then Gemini is, is the touch screen technology. So, you know, we're working on getting it so you can use it on your tablets. You know, like say you're out on your sales and marketing stuff and you want to use a tablet instead of a laptop, then that's, that's what Gemini is. I'm not sure how well developed it is. I haven't used it, but we're working on it, you know, and what I'd like to see is getting it all connected together, get Caligra, connected to uh, KDE contact, which is your email and, you know, calendar application and get, get that, you know, I would say may, and, and also get the browser, you know, I've been using this browser called Vivendi, Vivaldi, and it has the email and the browser all mixed together in one one application. I kind of like it. I mean, I open Vivaldi, and that's pretty much I just use Vivaldi all day long. That's all I uh, practically the only application I need because it does everything. And I don't know if that's the best idea, but it's you know it's kind of like what I you know. So you create uh, a really super high performance, you know. Uh, KDE contact and it would be your email and it would be your browser. You know, you could put Falcon could be add Falcon into the contact. You know, I'm not sure how you would connect Caligra to it, but uh, you know, you learn how to use Kexi as the database software. I think what Kexi is, is a database management software. I'll have to do a little bit more research about that, but Learn how to use all these KDE tools and build your little financial documentation system for your business and create a really nice, easy to use system for your home office, you know, the, where you can record all your income and all your expenses and your budget and your cash flow and all that and keep track of that. Use that to keep track of your property, your capital, and um, learn how to increase it. You know, one of the things you got to understand is that it's kind of like eating is not the purpose of life on Earth, but you do have to eat to live on Earth. And it's the same thing with money and capital and business and economics, you know. Everybody has to work. Everybody needs to be productive. You have to be productive in order to be healthy. Unproductive people are not healthy. And, and productivity can be a lot of different things. You know, you know, you could be working, at, you know, taking care of a house and babysitting and things like that. That's being productive, you know, and so that's valuable work. And we need to respect that. and. Another thing I think that is really important for business on a kind of a global scale is the family is really important. And the state needs to respect the family and the private ownership of the means of production and, and nurture that and, you know, protect it, serve and protect the families, you know, not just individuals, you know, but families. Families are the basic 
social organization of human nature and civilization. And we need to respect that in order for our civilization to be sustainable. It has to respect families and our whole civilization is going to, you know, the family is the center of it, you know. Spirituality is the most important thing and family is the next most important dimension. You know, there's the four dimensions are spirituality, family, exercise and nutrition, you know, your physical health and stuff like that is your third dimension. And then the fourth dimension is your career and your business and what are you doing? How are you being productive? And, and you need to, all four of those dimensions need to be healthy and balanced and, you know, taken care of. And, um, but write your business plan. You'll, you'll write your exe executive summary last. It's, it's the first section of the business plan, but you, you, you do it last after you've done all the other stuff and you have all the information is fresh in your mind then you'll do your executive summary kind of all and then but that'll be the first section it'll be about you know one or two pages long and it'll just kind of be a summary of your business plan and then your business description and vision is going to be okay so what are you producing and what do you want how, how do you want to and you want to think not so much about you want to think about what you're producing. That's an important part of it. But even more important than that is uh, what benefit are, is your is it your customer? You know, how are your customers going to benefit from that product that you're producing? You know, that's what you need to kind of concentrate on. And then your business description and vision is going to be how are you going to produce that and deliver that and all that kind of stuff and and you, you're going to do this, it's going to be a lot of work, you know, planning all this out and writing it down in your business plan. And, and, and your business plan is going to evolve. And, and then, uh, you know, the description of your products and services, you know, get into the, you know, what are the products and services and the organization and management of your company. What kind of company is it? You know, I, th I think the employee owned companies is the best model but you know I, you know it's just my opinion but we'll see how all that goes it kind of evolves too and uh, your sales how, how are you going to market you know what what is your market and then how are you going to attract attention and how are you going to fulfill your sales you know how are you going to close the sale you know, ask for the sale and close the sale. You want to have your paperwork handy and ready to go. So if somebody wants to buy something, it's it's easy for them to buy whatever it is you're selling. And your financial management is going to be your, you know, your documents, you know, your documentation and how you're going to manage the company. And um, write all that down. Your appendices are going to have things like, say, your 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 each employee's curriculum vitae and whatever, you know, and their resumes and things like that. Um, brochures, if you have any brochures describing your products, they could go in there and things like that. So you write a business plan and you get all that stuff and your business plan is going to evolve. You know, you want to revisit it every year or so. and rewrite it and update it you know mostly you'll be up you won't necessarily have to rewrite the whole thing but you'll update it you know and you'll add things and maybe subtract a few sections and this and that and then um, another thing that you could work have and be aware of and use for your business is what's called a strategic plan now your business plan is kind of an ongoing thing. It's the plan for your whole, whole business. Strategic plans are more of a, they're the same thing, but they're focused on one particular project. You're, 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 you've been working on your business plan for a long time and you decide, okay, it's time to add an affiliate marketing program. You would start building, you know, write a business plan for that one particular project. You know, and each one, it would have a, a section 
you know, all those sections, you know, your executive summary, your table of con comments, executive summary, business description and vision, definition of the market, description of products and services, organization and management, marketing and sales strategy, financial management and appendices. Each, you know, even those are your, that's the outline of your business plan and the outline of your strategic plan. Well, you, you know, any strategic plan, you know, you have a project, you want to start a, a new website, you know, let's say you create a new website and it's going to have all those sections, you know, and you would fill out each one and you just write down a, the lit table of contents, you write down the list of sections, you know, and then fill in the paragraphs for that section. And so that's, you know, that's write your business plan and plan your business and go out and do research and investigate your market, study your market. What is the market? What is What other companies are involved in your the business you're involved in? And be a high performance. Whatever it is you're doing, be a high performance uh, business person. You know, and get really good at it and just learn how to trade, learn how to make good deals and learn to be productive and trade that, and, you know, learn how to trade and make, you know, good deals. Keep working on improving your work ethic, your financial intelligence, you know, study money and economics and, you know, Read The Wealth of Nations, you know, uh, An Inquiry into the Wealth of Nations by uh, Adam Smith. And Frederick Hayek is one of my favorite economists. I've read a little bit of his writings and and I like him. He, he's got some, you know, it's been a long time since I read his stories, but they're pretty good stories. And so I recommend that you think about your financial documentation your private property and what what are you doing with that and how what's the best strategy for managing your private property you know think about spend some time thinking about that keep your financial statements up to date and and get really good at trading you know you can trade uh, stocks bonds you know all kinds of different things real estate and get good at it you know learn how to make good deals and check out blockchain. I think it's a the pretty good idea. Um, you know, the money situation, these bankers are kind of getting out of control. And I don't really trust them because they're kind of dictating things that um, they're, they're kind of, what are you talking about? Yeah, that's not your business to be talking about that. And so using blockchain to have, you know, privacy is an important thing. I agree the government has certain authorities that, and that, that they need to do and they need to do their job and make sure everybody the free the, the market the private property is um, well regulated and it's um, you know people have certain rights the state has certain rights to protect society and they need to do that well you know what this economy needs to be well regulated but one of the principles of that world economy needs to be privacy because it just seems that recently the state has gone overboard with thinking they ought to be able to control every little detail of life on earth and that's not right either. You know, the state does need to have authority to regulate the economy well and they should do that and they should control all the natural resources in the world everywhere on earth all the natural resources should be controlled by the state and the state would lease them out or however you want to deal with that and you know and resource extraction you want to be able to do that in a way that's fair and you know and so you'd have to figure out how to do that right and the blockchain is one good way to keep your private property private you know your private information private that's a good thing. Affiliate marketing and network marketing. The main reason I like network marketing is because the whole point of network marketing, in order to be successful at network marketing, you have to be you good at helping other people. The more people that you help succeed in network marketing, 
the more successful you are. That's how you succeed in network marketing is by helping other people succeed in network marketing. And so, you know, you get yourself a nice company, whatever, there's a lots of different ones that you could select and you buy into that and you start selling those products, get really good at it and like get good at helping other people do it and teaching other people how to sell those products sales and marketing and, and you know you've got to clean yourself up you got to look good and you know and act right and go in and talk to people and teach people how to make money and teach people how to do the business and get really good at that and develop your work routine you know what how, what are you doing and everything like that and you just get good at it and uh, and have fun, you know, because work, you know, you have to work and you have to be productive, but you want to make sure you have a have fun doing it. You know, you don't want working hard all the time and, you know, you want to be able to play, you know, your business plan, your market research, you know, always keep up to date researching what your market is going to be like. And uh, if there's any, you know, things going on that are going to disrupt the market or change, you know, keep your eye open for changes in the, in the market, the, the larger generic market, you know, the world market. Keep paying attention to the, the global, the national, and the local market that you're working in. You know, be creative. Create content you know i say I, I like building websites so what my product is content and i get, produce a lot of content whatever it is you're producing produce a lot of it and make sure the quality you know the, the quality is more important than the quantity quantity is important too but quality is more important than quantity you know make sure your products are valuable it's a uh, I think uh, the world economy is booming right now and find a niche for yourself in that market and produce something valuable and trade it in our one worldwide free marketplace. Build your central, you know, your personal information management system with your Caligra documents and your email products, you know. And uh, use that technology to its leverage, you know, as a lever, it's, it's your tools that you can use you to help be a, a high performance sales executive. You know, you're the, the chief executive officer of your own free enterprise, no matter what, what you're doing. Even if you're, if you're working for another company, you're, still, you're the CEO of your own private enterprise. And you're trading your your time and you know knowledge and experience with the co company. That's a business to business trade, and so keep working on that and thinking about that. And you know, pay attention to your private enterprise. You are a business, and and manage your business well, and keep pay attention to it and do a good job. You know, and use this advanced technology because it's a powerful lever. It's a, the artificial intelligence is the most powerful weapon ever invented by man. It's also the mo you know a tool. A tool is a weapon, and vice versa. You know, and so learn how to use that those tools in your free enterprise because they'll they'll make your pre free enterprise a lot more valuable. See, and you learn how to use that technology to make yourself you know you can go out and you know you've got your phone and you can connect to your database and all that and you've got all, all this information at hand and ready to use and easy and you're going to have to have some documentation because contracts are a big part of business and capitalism you know ownership private property you need to have contract you know so carry your papers around with you, you know, be able to be ready. If somebody says, yeah, I want to be ready to close the sale. And the 
this. You got to be friendly, kind, friendly, and polite. Work on in developing your customer service skills. It's a skill that you can learn. Any kind of documentation that you need to use for sales, you know, have it ready and it really easy, ready to go. So if somebody wants to buy something, everything's right there and you just, it's easy. Make it easy for your customers to buy your stuff. And, you know, and you've got to study the market, you know, do research, figure out where your customers are, what do they want, what are they, what are they thinking, you know, and all that. How do they buy stuff? Do they like to buy stuff in person? Do they like to talk to us in person? Or do they, they rather, would they rather do it online and not have to deal with the salesperson? You know, I mean, different, there's going to be different people are going to like different things. And so you got to find out what your particular kind of customers, you know, what are you selling? Is, you know, are you selling a physical product or are you selling something else? And so, spend time working on that and developing that part of your business, your sales and marketing part of your business. So you got your business documentation and you got your sales and marketing and your productivity, you know, you got to buy or your products, whatever, you know, your resource, whatever it is that you're using to make whatever you're making. You know, for me, I'm making information. So, I don't have any physical products I need. I, I do need my computer. I wouldn't be able to do this without a computer and the internet and phone and all that. So I do, you know, that, that's my, the physical part of my business. But if you're making physical products, then you, you have to work on your supply chain and do, develop your supply chain. Make sure your supply chain is, is good and you know honorable and up to date and you know environmentally sound you know you're not damaging the environment you know and work on that and get your system developed and uh, produce your products and create a system where people can buy your stuff you know are they going to buy it online over the phone whatever you know I, I you know, I'm pretty much teaching people to build your website, you know, and sell your stuff online. You know, and you're going to be using FedEx and UPS and develop relationships with companies like that, you know, whatever. There's several different ones you can use and get in and develop, learn how to operate and use that system to deliver your products. You know, and think about what, how is your product going to benefit your customers? Not just, you know, the best way I've heard that described is the drill, you know, if you're selling drill bits and stuff like drills, you know, you, you talk about the drill and the drill bits, but what you're really selling is holes, you know, and you got to focus on those holes, you know, and describe the holes that you can drill with the drill bit. And, and so what's the same with whatever product you're selling, you know, what is the customer actually, want? what's the benefit that they get from your products and focus on that. And, uh, you know, so keep making progress on your business. You know, think about uh, your advanced technology and your electronic, you use this leverage. The, the electronic technology, artificial intelligence is the most powerful weapon slash tool ever invented by man. And learn how to use it and investigate it. And that's what this website is kind of about, is about learning how to use your electronic technology to build a business. And I'm trying to teach you, instead of buying one from some big corporation, I'm teaching you how to build your own using free and open source software, you know, and um, I like private property, you know, using, I use your, I like, the reason I like free and open source software is because of the free enterprise. It's, I, I don't particularly like the license. The GPL is almost as bad as the Microsoft license. 
because it says nobody owns the property. And I, I'm saying own your own means of production. It's yours and you build it yourself and you own it and you can do whatever you want to. That's free enterprise. Okay. And that's what I'm recommending that you do. And so, you know, if I could do this, if I was a smarter computer technician, I'd probably be doing this business on BSD because they have the best license. They, they just say you can do whatever you want to with it. But I don't think the technology is as advanced as the Linux is because more people use Linux and so it's advanced. It's more advanced. But I like private property. Private property, I believe, is a universal human right and we need to keep, you know, protect, respecting people, private property. You know, I'm not so sure about the big corporations in a way they're operating. You know, I'm not, a, I, I, big corporations are a good thing. They produce things like jet planes and skyscrapers that no small business can produce. So I'm not opposed to big business at all. But I definitely think big business needs to be improved because it, what's going on is not okay. You know, it's, I don't want the any big business telling me what to do anymore and I want the government telling me what to do. You know, I'm a, I like free enterprise and freedom and equality and justice for all. And big businesses, they don't really care about that. You know, all they care about is making money. Making money is important. You, you have to make money, you know, but that's not the only thing. And so, you know, corporations, the way they're, uh, you know, they're, set up is going to have to improve, I think, because it's got to be good for Earth and good for everybody. You know, it can't just be good for some people and, you know, bad for everybody else. That's that's not business, that's corruption. And so, and I've seen, I was watching the other day, I looked at a video of uh, the World Economic Forum or what they call a uh, stakeholder capitalism and I kind of like it. I agree with that philosophy. Instead of sto only stockholders benefit, the stockholders benefit, but so do the employees and so does the community and this is, you know, the economy, the whole economy in general. Everybody benefits from it. I totally agree with that philosophy. And I, you know, I'm going like, how can anybody not agree with that philosophy? It's like, you know, selfish ambition is the dark side of human nature, and you can, that's not good, okay, so, and, um, you know, and we're all working together, we got to take care of the environment, you know, there's so many people now that we have to t manage our Im uh, Im impact, our environmental impact of all of our activities, our including our businesses, and so work on that, make sure your business is good for the environment and not harmful. Make sure you're not selling poison. You know, that's just disgraceful, in my opinion. You know, so all this food, you go into a gas station and almost everything in there is poisonous. You know, and not going like, that's not business. That's corruption. You know, pay attention to what's good for people and healthy, sell healthy snacks. I, I know for a fact that they can produce healthy snacks. They're more expensive, okay, so well, that, I'd rather pay a little bit more than eat a bunch of sugar and salt, you know, that's just not okay. So make sure your stuff is good for the people that you're selling, you know, you know take care of everybody, you know. And um, so that's one thing, you know, we're, we're terraforming the earth, you know, all of us together are terraforming earth, and that's why we need the state to manage like farming, agriculture, they don't necessarily need to, you know, dictate the market, but I'm just saying the private, the land is a natural resource. And so in order to be fair, it needs to be regulated, you know, controlled by the state. And the, there's going to be some sort of licensing system where a family gets a, a license to, uh, you know, operate a farm. You know, there's, I think the whole thing about taxes, part of me says, I don't want businesses paying any income tax because 
of the whole, you know, no taxation without representation issue and government of the people, by the people and for the people. In order to protect that government of the people, by the people and for the people, you know, we need that only the people are taxed. You know, now a business would be taxed for, they would pay like, say for example, a trucking company would pay, they could measure the miles that they drive on the road and they would have to pay a fee for that. I don't know how you would figure it out, but just figure it out and just pay. And they would have to pay for the miles that they drive for the road maintenance, you know, and fuel and everything else. And the, I think we should get to all electric vehicles as fast as we can. I mean, there's no way that we can pump billions of tons of chemicals into the atmosphere and not affect it. So we need to work on that and get that cleaned up and, uh, you know, replace all the internal combustion engines with electrical motors. We can do that. There's no problem. And we need to figure out clean ways to generate the electricity. And I kind of agree a little bit with the idea that the, you know, wind turbines, you can use wind turbines from time to time, but that's not a good way to, for the, you know, we've got to figure out other ways. I think fusion energy is going to be the main source of electricity. The next big source of electricity is going to be fusion power. And we got to get the, the moon, you know, if the, the helium three is the easiest element to fuse. You know, it takes less energy to fuse helium three than any other element. Helium three is two protons and one neutron. And, you, and it's easier to fuse helium than any other helium three specifically than any other element. So helium three is very rare on earth. Because, uh, and but it is helium three is one of the ingredients of the solar wind that's just been flowing out from the sun for five billion years or however long the sun's been shining, and the earth and so the moon has been saturated. You know, Earth's magnetic field protects the earth from that helium three, you know, that so solar wind. But the moon, it's, you know, the surface of the moon, the lunar regolith, the, the dust that just covers the moon is saturated with helium-3. And so we could be mining that along with metal and material to build spaceships and gliders. You know, we could build gliders on the moon and electromagnetic rail guns accelerator 10 kilometer long deals that basically throw the gliders up into space, you know, from the surface of the moon, build the gliders on the moon and throw them up into space, load, you know, and load them up with uh, helium-3 and other materials. You know, they would get, they would, you know, the moon is a pretty big gravity well, so you would get most of your material from the asteroids. So you would fly out to the asteroid belt and load up the Thing with whatever material you couldn't get a lot in there because if you want to land you're not going to be able to carry a tremendous amount of weight but you can load up a bunch of material you know metal and stuff like that from the asteroids and then come back to earth and just glide down and land on the ocean and um, then go into ports designed for those ships and unload everything and I don't know if you would be able to reuse them but you could definitely recycle the material that the, the gliders are made of. And uh, one of the benefits of uh, fusion energy is the, the shields. You know, if you build the technology to contain the fusion reactor reaction, you know, that technology can be used to push and pull spaceships around, you know. Because it's it takes a lot of energy. That's why it's so hard to con do fusion, you know, control fusion reactions. Is because you have to be able to contain that fusion reaction, and whatever technology you come up with to do that, 
can be used to, to accomplish other things like creating shielding in space, different, you know, because you got all kinds of radiation and everything like that. So you could use it as shields, you can create shields, and you can also use it to push and pull things around. And another thing is, is the, the uh, transmutation of elements technology is one of the most important technologies. And, you know, I don't know a whole lot about it. I just know that you can use your fission reactors to split atoms apart, and you can use your fusion reactors to fuse atoms together. And so you can pretty much make any element that you need. You can make as much of any element as you need when we learn how to do that. You know, there won't be any worries about mining stuff because we just manufacture as much of anything as we want. And we can use some base material, whatever, you know, you can probably find you know, sand or water or whatever, you know. I mean, because there's no shortage of material and there's no shortage of energy. The universe is made out of energy. You know, and matter, all, all matter is is just kind of condensed energy, you know, a particular form of energy. And we can kind of, they're interchangeable, you know, and so we can learn how to, you know, I mean, that there's a, it's not, it's going to take a while to figure out the technology, but we've already made a lot of progress. We're already, we've, we've been using nuclear fission reactors for a long time and we've been experimenting with fusion reactors and so we have the technology we've already made a lot of progress in that area and we need to keep working on it because i have a feeling that's going to be a big part it's not the the ultimate the ultimate is the zero point energy technology whatever that is i'm, I'm not exactly sure what it is i think it has to do with you'll be generating your own gravity i'm pretty sure is one of the benefits of it I don't know, but all I know is the, uh, the, uh, you know, that's how the, the whole acute angle turn issue, you know, where those spaceships can just make the acute angle turns is because they're generating their own gravity. And that's, it's, it's kind of interesting, you know, but I wanted to add that into this story because it's important. Uh, the fusion is a very important technology. It's like the next level. It'll, it'll, we can we can wean ourselves off the hydrocarbons by using few, you know electricity generated by fusion reactors, and then the fusion, the technology of the fission and fusion technology we can use is our transmutation of elements technology, which will totally trans. There won't ever be any shortage of anything again ever. You know, because we can just manufacture as much of any element that we need, and we can then we can make it into anything. So that's just you know something to think, and we'd use that helium three to for fusion reactors all over the earth. You know, to supply plenty of electricity for you know we'd never have a shortage of energy, and um, because there'll be other even better sources. You know, the whole universe is made out of energy. There's no shortage of energy. It can't possibly be a shortage of energy, you know, because the universe is all it is, is just a big, huge, you know, blast of power, you know, and, you know, some of it is condensed into matter. It's just all it is, is condensed power, you know, and so we can just, there's millions of different ways that we can access that. You know, one of the most uh, accessing that zero point energy, whatever it is, you know, that whatever that power that is causing the expansion of the universe to accelerate, you know, that to me, that's, that's, that's how we make the jump to light speed. We get access that power and learn how to use it, how to harness that power is how we get the power to jump from one solar system to another one and that's a fascinating subject you know but the business on your business you want to keep working in that that's the the global economy it's a one world economy we're building it's called a class one civilization it's global 
it's spacefaring, it's, you know, there's no poverty, crime and, you know, disease would be extremely rare, you know, and, and the whole planet would be peaceful and prosperous and um, clean, you know, clean up the trash for your gosh. You know, and uh, hires a lot of these poor people to pick up the trash and clean up the cities. And, um, but we, we have to have some education that teaches people about the laws of economics. You know, because a lot of the problems are kind of like self-inflicted wounds, you know. I mean, there's no, you know, like all this homelessness, there, you know, that is totally, it's like unbelievable that it's even allowed to happen because it's so simple to solve. You know, our society needs to be organized to, to make it easy for people to start businesses and be successful in business. Our state needs to protect businesses from being wiped out by big business. You know, these big businesses, it's not okay. It's not okay for somebody to have hundreds of billions of dollars in a neighborhood, you know, being swarmed by homeless people. That's just corrupt. And anybody that doesn't know that is, there's something wrong with you. If you don't recognize it, that that's not okay. You know, I agree that people who do the work deserve the rewards, but most of them people, homeless people are there, they've got whatever problem. You know, we've got to stop the drugs. The drug abuse has got, you know, we need an all out, all hands on deck, the whole entire human race. We've got to stop the drug abuse. It is the plague of the 21st century and it is devastating human civilization. All human civilization is being devastated by drug abuse and we need to stop it. Drug trafficking is the most violent crime and we need to stop it. And uh, so, you know, keep working on that and keep building your business, you know, making the world a better place and trading, you know, and have fun trading, you know, and making the world a better place. Check out the Holistic Home Office book and read it and uh, write your own business, create your own business plan and uh, work on being productive and keep working on being productive and improving your business and your whatever it is that you're creating. So thanks and have a great day and see what I can put together with all these videos I've made here this morning. So peace be with you and have a great day.